Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Science World. Welcome to Facebook Live. Uh, I wanted to begin by acknowledging we are gathered here on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil My name is Brian. Uh, today, very, very exciting. It's our first time back in the building in a number of weeks. We are excited to be joining you here on Facebook Live, direct from the center stage. And for those who've been to our center stage shows before, here in Science World, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, you know, one of the first things we always look at is safety. We have our safety zone in the front. Today, we don't have an audience here in the building. We have all of you here at watching from home. But I do have a few people working with me. and uh, We are making very sure that we are nicely socially distanced apart. Uh, I have my friend Jeff, who is operating the camera right over there. Jeff can zoom in and out a little bit. So if we want to get a closer look at things, he can do that while still staying out of um, speaking moistly type range. Uh, also, over on this side, we have my friend Ashley. Ashley is looking at all the social media coming through, looking at your chats, looking at your comments coming through on Facebook Live. Uh, from time to time, we would love to get your input, your questions, your ideas of different things going on. Uh, so please feel free to chat them in there, uh, add different pieces of information, put on different uh, reactions if you like different things happening. We always like to hear what's going on that way. Uh, one of the first things we want to look at, today is a special day. It is not just we're doing a live stream here from Science World, but it is Science World's birthday. Uh, Science World turned 31 years old, 31 years ago, or we opened our doors for the first time. And I know birthdays have been a little bit weird lately. I actually had my birthday uh, just a few weeks ago, and it's a little bit different having birthdays at home. I was curious if people in the chat if you want to add, if you've had a birthday recently, if you had a birthday since you've been at home, uh, put in your name and how old you are now. We'd love to hear some of the birthdays there. Um, some of the other folks who were asking here before, we have Jen. I forgot to Im introduce earlier. Jen is also socially distanced over there as our director for the day. Uh, they were suggesting if you want to make a prediction about how old you think I turned, feel free to add that in the chat and, and we'll see what we get coming back from that one there. A uh, few other things we wanted to try today. Because we're doing a birthday party of sorts, we want to try different birthday activities. I like to start with a game. And in fact, there's a game here at Center Stage that I love to do before all of our shows. And I'm going to see if it's one that we can play at home as well. Okay? Uh, the game has a very simple name. It is called Don't Poke Yourself in the Eye. Okay? And the way you play Don't Poke Yourself in the Eye is pretty simple. There is only one rule and don't poke yourself in the eye. You can call it out if you think, type it in the chat. The thing to keep in mind in don't poke yourself in the eye is don't poke yourself in the eye. Exactly. The way you play involves a little bit of coordination. So you're going to need a couple of hands free here. Everybody who's watching can play along. I want you to take one hand and grab your nose. Okay. Take your other hand, reach past your nose, you're holding onto your ear. We're going to do a little tug, and then what we call the slap switch. You go slap and switch. The hand that was on your ear is now on your nose. The hand that was on your nose goes across to the other ear. And slap and switch, slap and switch. You can go a little bit faster, switch, slap and switch. But remember, the name of the game is don't poke yourself in the eye. The other nice thing about this game is generally you know when you are out. <laughs> awesome. The other thing to keep in mind if you're playing this game, be sure to wash your hands ahead of time. Because I've just realized I've just told a whole bunch of people to touch their faces, which is something else we should probably try to avoid these days. <laughs> All right. Let us look at some of the fun and amazing things you can do as a birthday show here. Behind me, I have a large tablecloth set up. Now, normally I would set up my table with all the dishes spread around. Today, I thought, let's try something a little bit different. We're going to go vertical. We're going to go way, way up top. And I'm going to take the challenge of even with all of these dishes here, I want to remove the tablecloth. Now, there's a couple of things involved in this, a couple of scientific principles that are going to help me. The first one is friction. I want you to all try this at home. Take your hands, okay, slap them together, and rub back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this, you might feel something happening to your hands. Okay? If you feel something different in your hands when you do that, when you rub back and forth, 
type it in the chat. I'm actually going to check in with Ashley. Ashley, did we hear from anybody whose birthday is there? Anybody who's turned different ages coming up? Birthday. Yeah? Uh, Nolan turned seven. Nolan is seven. Happy birthday, Nolan. And Alexi Moore, Keenan turned ten. Awesome, ten. Lyndon is turning five on April 14th. Lyndon is going to be five. That's great. Happy birthday to all of you folks. All right. Uh, here is what we're going to try. We've done this before, rubbing like that when they're touching. Now try with your hands apart and rub back and forth with a little bit of air in between them. Now, Ashley, did anybody mention what happened when their hands were rubbing when they were together? Lorene says, says they're getting hot. Yes, you're creating some heat energy. You're turning that movement energy into heat energy. But if your hands are a little bit apart, there's less friction. They can slide and you don't get that energy going. Here, we are trying to turn this tablecloth away, pull the tablecloth away, and we want to minimize that friction. We want nice smooth things like our smooth, shiny pizza pan, our very smooth fabric there. The other thing we use is something called inertia. Okay, you can give a little check mark or a smiley face or something in the chat if you've ever heard this word before, inertia. Inertia is a fancy word for basically saying things have a tendency to be a little bit lazy. Okay, an object at rest is going to stay at rest unless you apply a force to it. Same if an object is moving in a straight line. It's going to keep going in a straight line unless you push it to change its direction. Now here we want to increase that inertia, so I've added a little bit of extra weight in these cups. Some little weights uh, from some balloons full of kitty litter. The secret part of science world. All right. I'm going to pull the tablecloth away. I will let you know. This ends one of two ways. Either it is amazing or it is hilarious. Either way, people tend to enjoy what goes on there. A couple of things we'll ask. You can put your answers in the chat if you like. Do you think it's best to pull very slowly or very fast to snap this out? I'll let those come in. The other thing I'll let you know, there's three basic directions I can go. I can snap the tablecloth down, I can pull the tablecloth straight back, or I can pull the tablecloth straight up. Now, I like to say two of those are good directions, <laughs> one of those is a bad direction. If you have an idea as to what might be the bad direction, throw it in the chat. I'm going to see if people agree with me on this one. Uh, Ashley, any uh, comments on slow or fast coming in on this? Tara says fast. I agree with Tara. Uh, I've, I've tried slow before. It leads to interesting outcomes. Uh, anybody have an opinion on which is the bad direction to go? I know my thoughts. Sarah says snap it out. All right, Sarah, I like your thoughts. We're going to try this all together. All right, we're going to try a countdown. Have your fingers ready over the keyboards. We're going to do a three, two, one. Count it down in the chat. <gasps> three. Two, one, oh yeah, happy birthday, the tower is still intact. I'm excited, that does not always go well. I have a famous picture of me where you can see the tower leaning over me at about 30 degrees just before it falls on my head. Let's carefully move that back over this way while staying in frame. It's all about camera work. All right. We want to try something else, a little bit fun there, as we're sitting. Let's actually go back in. Ashley, any more birthdays popped up there? Anyone? Now she's going to look there as she does that. I'm going to pop on some safety gear. We're using some very high-powered chemicals here, so I want to make sure I'm protecting my eyes, and I'm going to protect my hands with these special gloves as well. All right, this is our special birthday show. Oh, I'm also curious, were there, <laughs> were there any predictions about how old I am now? I am timeless. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I will happily be timeless for all of you all the time. All right, this is an element of birthdays. There's something people often have for dessert around a birthday. There's a cake. People enjoy baking cakes. A lot of people are baking at home now, making different types of bread, different things they've never tried making before. And one of the key elements that comes into that kind of baking is actually chemistry. A lot of the times to get the light fluffy cake, to get the light fluffy bread that's coming out, you're looking for a lot of bubbles coming out of that. Now in kitchen chemistry, you're often using things like vinegar and baking soda, making some 
baking powder or something in there. Here, we're going to go a little more high powered. We are using a chemical called hydrogen peroxide. And this is actually pretty high powered hydrogen peroxide. This is 30%. It's about 10 times stronger than the stuff you'd have at home. Hydrogen peroxide is a disinfectant, which means don't eat it. You should not ever eat a disinfectant. This is a very dangerous type thing there, but it allows to show how we can make some gases. In fact, even right now, there's little bubbles coming up at the top because our hydrogen peroxide is breaking down into H2O and O, or O2. It's breaking down to O2, which is oxygen. H2O, oh, I'm going to throw this as a question to the comments. If you know what H2O is, type it in the comments. Let other people know there. But I want to speed up this process, because we're getting little bubbles there. We're getting some O2, some of that gas coming out. I'm going to try and catch some of those bubbles with a little bit of soap. And then to speed things up, we have a chemical here called hydrogen, or hydrogen peroxide in there. This is called potassium iodide. The potassium iodide acts as a catalyst to speed things up. Uh, all right, Ashley, what is H2O? Julian and Susan say it's water. Julian and Susan say it is water, and that is exactly right. Thanks, Matilda. Julian and Susan. What's that? Matilda. Oh, Matilda. Awesome, Matilda. I love that name. Okay, we have got our potassium iodide. Always put the lid on your container. Move it out of the demonstration zone. We're going to try here again. If you want to put your fingers on the keyboards there. Three, two, one. Hiya. And there is our foam. Oh my goodness, it's very, very foamy today. Now some of you might notice there's a little bit of steam coming off. I don't know if you can see it against the black of my t-shirt there. This tells us this is a reaction that is exothermic. Not only is it making new materials, but it's making some energy. It's giving off some heat as it comes out. You might also notice some different colors coming through there. We've got the foam from the bubbles, but particularly if you look down around the front, the sides there, you might see some other colors coming out. If you see some colors there, Note them in the comments. We'll see what you observe. That's one of the big things as a scientist. We want to make predictions and we want to make observations. All right, I'm going to move this messy thing out of the way here because it's time for the food. Now, now I'm not just a scientist. I'm a little bit of an inventor as well. So I want to show you over here one of my inventions that we've created. I'm going to stay with the camera as it gradually pans over with me. This is fun. Neat. All right. Oh, Ashley, did we get any colors coming out? Anybody notice any colors there? Vivi said brown. Who said that? Vivi. Vivi. Oh, thanks, Vivi. Yeah, yeah, kind of a brownish color. That's actually the iodine. Uh, potassium iodide breaks down into iodine, and iodine naturally has kind of a yellowish brown color. All right. I'm going to show you my invention. I have a can of Pringles over here. Now, normally, you have to open up this can and hand the Pringles, hand the chips around to everyone, and it just takes so long. So I thought, maybe we can improve this with some high explosives. So, don't try this at home, but I've put a little hole in the top of my Pringles can, and I've put another little hole down in the side of my Pringles can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hole in the side to fill the can with hydrogen. That's what's in this balloon. Hydrogen gas is lighter than air, but it's also very explosive. So if we set fire, we're going to see if we get just the right mix of hydrogen and oxygen to make this Pringles can explode, launching those delicious Pringles chips all over. A few things to keep in mind. This does use some fire, so it's important. Always remember, fire demonstration should only be done by a trained adult. I have my matches here, but I'm also wearing my goggles for protection. Uh, if you have hair, make sure you tie it back out of the way. I have taken a more extreme solution to this. And always have safety gear standing by, so I have my fire extinguisher right there ready for me. Now, something I like about this demonstration, it's always a little bit of a surprise how long it's going to take. So we talked about observation before. This time, I would love for all of you at home in the comments, make a prediction. So your prediction is going to be how many seconds you think it's going to be from the moment we light the can until the can explodes. Now I will count it off. One, two, three. Right now, though, type in your prediction. 
how many seconds do you think it's going to be before our can explodes? I'm going to move these gloves out of the way so I can use the matches a little more cleanly. We're going to start by filling the can with hydrogen. Oh, release our balloon a little bit here. I always twist it up just to make sure that we don't have too much hydrogen leaking out if there's a leak anywhere. And there we go. Ooh, it's a good balloon. All right, let's get some hydrogen coming in there. That's all right. Sometimes you have different things happening with your equipment. There we go. So the hydrogen is filling the can. Because hydrogen is lighter than air, the hydrogen is coming in from the bottom, but some of it's going to be coming out the top. And that's the stuff that we're going to light. And then we'll start our count. Move the hydrogen out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> nine and a half. Anyone have nine and a half on our list there? Andy had ten. Andy, had ten. Andy that is pretty much dead on. Nicely done, Andy. Um, now, there's a few slight flaws still in my invention here. You'll notice that the chips kind of end up all over and they're they're maybe not quite as intact as before, but I still feel like this invention has potential. All right, we're going to oh, zoom in on those. Yeah. If, if you'd eat those chips, make a note in the comments. <laughs> we'll see what kind of um, the lovers of chips we have going on. <laughs> uh, I wanted to let you know, even though the dome is closed, Science World is still hard at work. Uh, as a charitable organization, the loss of our main revenue source has been a big financial crisis for us. So if you're able to, uh, please donate so that Science World can still be around, igniting wonder and empowering dreams for many years to come. Speaking of igniting, though, we have one more birthday demonstration we want to try here. And we thought it would be fun along with this if we could all sing a little happy birthday for Science World and for all the people at home, all the people in your home who've been having birthdays lately. We were talking about making our cake before. Now we're going to look at how we can blow out the candles on that cake in a nice scientific way. I'll show you what I have in mind. Back here, I have a little fuel. This is called lycopodium. It is a very fine powder, and it's very easy to set fire to. Now, when we talk about fire in a science term, in order to have flame or combustion, you need three main elements. You need fuel, this is our lycopodium. You need oxygen, fortunately we have lots of oxygen around us here in the room. And you need heat. Now our heat is going to be my candle, which is this. Light our little candle there, we're going to blow through and it'll come over that way. Uh, we want to build this up and it's actually a good reminder, we were talking before about washing your hands. Some of you might know there's a good song that helps you remember how long to wash your hands. Washing your hands for about 20 seconds is about as long as it takes you to sing through Happy Birthday. Now I've invited my three friends who are here with me today and myself. We're going to go through, we're going to sing a little Happy Birthday, finishing with our big finale there. Uh, for all the people in your home, please sing Happy Birthday to the people who've been having their birthdays at home. Let's get set. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear science world. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everyone. And you know what? Someone has also reminded me, when you're washing your hands, don't sing it once. Sing it twice. That'll get you all the way through. Uh, please check out all of the fun resources we have. If you're looking for science to try at home, there's a whole set of videos called Show Us Your Science. If you've been doing science at home, if you've been trying out some experiments in your kitchen, in your backyard, different places, make a note in the comments. I'd love to hear what you've been up to. Uh, I'm also going to be around for a few minutes, so if you want to type in some questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about things you've seen in the show, things in general. Uh, and if you know any good jokes, I always like to hear a good joke as well. Thank you so much. I've been Brian. Happy birthday from science. Oh, and one last thing.
Come back next week at 2.20. This is going to be a weekly series. You'll be able to see live science here from Science World. 2.20 every Wednesday on Facebook Live. Any questions coming in there, Ashley? Keith asked, how do you make the Heath? Key or Heath? Heath. Heath. Oh, Heath was asking about our rings from before. Okay, I don't know, Jeff, can you zoom in there a little bit? That's actually one of my favorite optical illusions going on. So what's happening here, I'll move our little balloon dog out of the way. It looks like there's one ring floating back and forth on the top of the other one. It's actually, I'll turn off, there's a little motor inside. In fact, I'll flip it around so you can see. I've got a little switch that I can turn that off and on. But really what's happened is these rings are physically joined together. They're welded together here and here. And when it spins, all you're really seeing is that join traveling around in a circle. But when they study how we perceive motion, they find that even though you know how it works, it's often easier for a brain to believe that it's floating back and forth and rocking rather than that little join traveling around. It's one of my favorite illusions because even though I know how it works, it still fools me every time. Uh, Ashley, any other questions, jokes coming out? We have Hannah asked, what do you miss most during Science World's closure? Oh, Hannah's asked, what do I miss most during Science World's closure? Um, I would say for me, more than anything, it is talking to you. It is being able to do shows like this, being able to ask questions from people. Um, the, the curiosity, it's the, the best way that I know to learn something better is to have someone ask me a question that I've never heard before about it. So yeah, what I miss most is, is you, being able to talk to the people here in the building. Jesse asks, how do you come up with new experiments? Oh, Jesse asks, how do we come up with new experiments? That is a great question, um, and that it, it's got some fun experiments that have come out of that. Um, we're fortunate that we're part of some networks of science museums all around the world. Uh, there's one called the Canadian Association of Science Centers, or CASC, so we get together and we share ideas. There's also something called ASTEC, the Association of Science and Technology Centers, and all these people at science museums all around the world will share different ideas, will find new things. Sometimes people will send me something, oh, we saw this neat thing on YouTube. Sometimes people will just start with, here's an existing experiment. What happens if we change this one variable or change something to make it bigger or smaller? Um, the big thing for us is we always want to take that, and before we put it as a demonstration that we're showing in front of an audience, let's test it. Let's find out the ways to make it safe, to make it reliable, to make it fun, but more than most important, to make sure that it's always going to be something that can be safe for the presenter and for all the people watching. Great question. Uh, can you say happy birth birthday to Daphne? I can say happy birthday to Daphne. Happy birthday, Daphne! Elizabeth wants to know if you can blow up a flower next week. Can I blow up a flower next week from Elizabeth? Hmm, I don't know if we, we, we have some plans for next week, but we'll see. Um, I definitely will keep in mind the, hmm, you, you, you see, now we ask, where do we get new ideas for experiments? It's from Elizabeth. I'm now thinking, how can I blow up a flower? I know how to freeze one and crush it, but perhaps we'll have to work on other plans. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, you want a joke? I would love a joke. Let's hear it. Uh, why don't ants get sick? Why don't ants get sick? You know, this is a difficult joke to tell, too, because you guys have all seen the answer in the chat already. <laughs> but I'm curious to know, why don't ants get sick? Because <laughs> they have little antibodies. Oh, I love that joke so much. Uh, Ashley, any one last thing we can respond to out there? Oh, that's nice. Thank you all for saying that, and thank you all for coming and being part of it. Uh, you're going to get to see some of your favorite other Science World presenters every week as we do this. We're looking forward to continuing to connect with you. And definitely, if you're doing science at home, show it to us. Put up a picture. Put up a little video. Just make a comment somewhere. Uh, we'd love to hear what you're doing. Thanks, everyone. This has been Live from Center Stage.